All right, people, I'm back again, and I was talking about God's goodness, the goodness of the Lord, but I left off on talking about his promises. You know, God's goodness only is for those that love him, those that call upon him. God's mercy is only for those who love him and those that call upon him or those that stay grounded in the faith with him. I know people don't like to hear this. But the thing is, God does send rain on the just and the unjust. But his real promises and his real goodness, only those that love him with a pure heart and give their life to Jesus Christ is going to really get to see the true promises that he has for them. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to pray, place, prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you. So wherever you will be, where I will be, you will be there also, says the Lord. But you know what? That place is only reserved for those who endure, who endure his chastisement, who, those who make corrections, those who repent. He said, those, a lot of people don't come to me and get their lives to me because so their deeds will be exposed. They love the darkness more than they love the light. So a lot of children of darkness is not, are never going to really understand God's goodness and God's mercy and God's truth. That's one of those people that blame God for everything. But they can't not see his goodness. But the thing is, soon as something happened, God, if God was real, why would God allow this? There was a God. Hmm. Why are you even talking about it? And the Bible says every knee will bow. That doesn't mean every knee will go to heaven, will inherit eternal life. No, it's the truth. Only those who accept Jesus Christ in their life, in their hearts, in their soul, with our all honest and all truth and worship Him and spread in the truth. You know, like a believer who loves Christ and they say God is good. A non-believer, they're gonna look at you like you're stupid. So everybody don't even see God's goodness. And mercy. And the thing is, he's trying to reach out to everyone. One thing I read about the um, in the Old Testament, a lot of times he said, if the strange strangers decide to dwell with you, the strangers in the New Testament is more like Gentiles, Gentile or Jew. The strangers that God talked about that could inherit the promises too, could inherit the things that he promised are those that accept and it's back in the day, it was those who accepted, if they wanted to live with the children of Israel, they got to accept their statutes and their standards and their commandments. They got to live with them according to their word and their standards. Same way with the Gentiles. I consider myself a Gentile. I can't say I'm a Israelite or I'm a Jew. I don't know. I can't trace my ancestry that far back and I'm not even trying to. All I want to know is that I'm a child of God. And I'm a child of the Most High. And I know that the New Testament says everybody that called upon God's name. And it was like that in the Old Testament. He told you to treat strangers well. He didn't say treat them bad. He didn't. Love your neighbor as yourself is not even a new commandment. It's an old commandment. It's not new. It's been around. You see, when God went through and destroyed lands and the places... But aren't you glad that God is not as strict as he used to be? As the Lord is not as strict as he used to be. But he still is strict. The thing is, the punishment won't come. The final punishment will not come until Jesus comes. That's why a lot of people, you don't, people don't see the things that Jesus used to do. Yeah, the Lord used to do back in the Old Testament. Because he slacked up a little bit on that. You know, when he when he came in the flesh, he changed a lot of things. You know, but the thing is, a lot of the miracles don't come because a lot of people started worshiping other gods and doing all these things throughout history. You don't see too many of the miracles and things of such like that anymore. If you start reading the New Testament, I mean, reading the Old Testament, you'll see a pattern, you know, from from Noah to Moses. In Moses days, you were seeing a lot of miracles through Somebody, but you'll see, they got to see and talk with God. They got to hear his voice. 
you know, but as you see, as the time progressed, he talked to specific people. He worked through specific people a lot. He worked through man to show his power. Through Samson, the pillars. Through David, through the Goliath. He started changing up. He still works the same miracles and the works that he just do, but he does, normally does it through man now. He still do the same miracles, don't get me wrong. But it's not as it used to be. That's why he said you, you got to believe. He said, tell my st stories and my statues, all the things that happened in the wilderness to your children, so they'll know God's power. God was telling us that eventually, I'm not going to perform all these miracles and wonders in this world no more. You're just going to have to believe what you read. Believe it. And then once you give your life to Jesus Christ and you give your life to me, you're going to start seeing me. Just like the rainbow I just saw. It's a sign from God. How would I know that? God said it. And I'm going to go with that. I don't care what sign said. When a rainbow comes, when the light hit the... I don't care when the rainbow comes. When it came, I know it's a sign that God said he'll never flood the earth anymore. And it's never been flooded. Not the entire earth. So God didn't lie on that part. God said that the next time that he destroyed the earth, he's going to destroy it with fire. Ooh. You know, water cleanses. Fire Oof. Fire got another kind of cleansing. Fire. Like if you put water on your body right now, it's not going to change how your flesh looks. You put fire on your body, it's going to burn it. It's going to change how it looks. You're going to end up with bruises and scars. But it's not really a cleansing, it's like a destruction. destroy but God is good so you got to take all the stories everything that God has done I want to hear the people will the God of the Bible is the God in the Old Testament it's not like the God of the New Testament well the New Testament tells me that the Lord is the same Lord in the Old Testament that was Jesus back then, operating under his God's, his Father's perfect will, often. In the Old Testament, that was Jesus. That was Jesus, the same Jesus everybody loves in the New Testament, they need to learn to love in the Old Testament. He said, search the scriptures, they all testify of me. They speak of who? Me. But a lot of people are still ignorant too. The New Testament Jesus is different from the Old Testament Jesus. Wrong. They're one and the same. One and the same. The same Lord that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is the same Lord that gave his life on the cross. God is good. The Lord is good. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask you a personal question. Who wants to live in a life, a, a world full of murderers, thieves, everything that the Bible says is evil? Who want to live in that world with no God? You know, during the days of Noah, everything went. You ever watch the movie Mad Max? That's how it was. Anything went. Everything goes. Complete lawlessness. No order. Noah and his family dishes themselves from the others. And when the, end, the last days come, he was like, as it was in the days of Noah's going to be then. So you need to take care of your home and this is your home from the world. So you can be ready too. So you can experience God's goodness. You need God shut the ark up. And all the people he left in there was Moses' family. I mean, Noah's family. And everybody else, there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. All the people who didn't live circumspectly. 
God tries the hearts. I know most people are like that's that's why would God do that? Well, would you rather live in a world with just constant lawlessness? Constant pain and suffering? Hmm. It would have just got worse. It would have just got worse. You know, there I, I watched documentaries about places in Africa and places over there. And I watched about Mexico and how the cartels and the drug lords run the place. And they kill who people and they hang them up on the bridges. And nobody says anything because the cartels are in charge. And the cartels are bringing a little money, open up a few churches and do these things like that for the city. And the people won't turn on them because they worship them. And they do all this other stuff. But they let it slide. It wouldn't have turned a blind eye as long as you buy that, create that church or that park. You can look around the world today and see how God has left a building in so many places. The Bible also says evil will destroy the wicked. So, guess what? As children of God, you don't need to be evil. You don't need to be wicked. He says he's angry with the wicked every day. If somebody do something to hurt your kids or hurt your loved ones that's evil, aren't you going to be angry with them? You are. It's natural. It's a time to love. There's a time to hate. You're going to be upset with that. But you got to get over it. You have to forgive. You don't have to take matters in your own hands. This is not like an action film when somebody's family gets killed and they go and go on a, a wild goose chase and actually find the person within two days. <laughs> it's not like that. You know, they go out there and they go on a bloody rampage. That kill numerous people. But you know they look at it like. Well he killed bad people. You know everybody that worked for bad people. Ain't evil. You know that. Okay. Just want to throw that out there. You understand. They just chose the wrong path. But you know one thing. One thing I didn't notice. This off subject. You will watch superhero movies right. You see Jesus Christ had no weakness. You do know that, right? He loved us. He cared about us. You know, but he showed you how his love was kind of different. Like, every time they brought his mother along, who was my mother? He's like, he never put nobody above nothing. He was just peaceful. He was just calm. He didn't place too much friendship, love, and this friend over the other. He didn't get married because marriage would cause him to be weak. In an area You know like take Superman I've been watching the TV show Superman and Lois And they show a glimpse of the future And Superman is evil If anybody follow the comic book Or know the story Superman turns to the dark side Once he can't save Lois So it's Human instincts come in He's His vengeance He's like I'm going to do things my way now And he turned evil You see Jesus don't have that such characteristic. All his judgment is true. It's not like that. You see, man, even super beings are in, in the comic books, they have so many weaknesses. They have family ties, and we do too. I'm not saying family is not good. I'm not saying that love is not good. I'm saying it's a difference between God's love than a superman's love. You see, Lois Lane got Superman for her husband. So she gets special care compared to anybody else. You remember in the old movie when Superman turned the earth around? You know how many people that died in the world? How many people that died before Lois? But as soon as Lois died, Superman spin the whole world around backwards and turn back the hands of time, which is for one person. God is not going to do that. 
He don't have to. He got a day of judgment reserved for everyone. The biggest thing about superheroes, they take matters in their own hands and sometimes they cause more destruction than they cause peace. And that same way with man. That's why we're taught to put our trust in the, the Lord and the goodness of the Lord and the mercy of the Lord and the promises of the Lord and stay true to him. Do you know what I'm getting while I'm talking in circles like this today? If you want to experience the goodness of the Lord, you got to see it from every side, every angle, every aspect. When you talk about God's promises, talk about all God's promises. It was a promise that he would curse those, that they would inherit a curse. The people that turned again, it was a promise. It was a bless. It was a promise when he blessed and said, that whoever keep my statutes and my commands, it's a promise. It's a promise in the New Testament. We say all those who call upon my name will be saved and will be delivered. But calling on God's name, you got to understand when you call on Jesus' name and you invite him in your life, he starts making changes in your life. So you got to understand when you truly call upon God, he's going to make changes. You're not going to be the same person. You might hold a lot of characteristics in certain ways still. That's why he said he trims the branches. He prunes it. He chest out he changes things he's leaves something so the, he shakes it up so the things that left standing will remain some some parts of your life some parts of your well-being and how you are are gonna remain everything he's not gonna make you a robot <laughs> he's gonna make you a different person with some of the same characteristics that you once had that's a promise when you give your life to christ when you feel it truly do but you got to tread carefully. You know, I told you one of the scariest lines to me is when Christ said, a lot of will come people to come to me on that faithful day and say, Lord, Lord. And he'll say, depart from me, you that work in equity. I never knew you. That's scary. So you already know you got to walk with a fine tooth comb. So Jesus himself even told you, there's a little more to it. Yes, you got to give your life to me. You got to live, give your life over to Christ. The only person you can see, the only way you can see my father is through me. So, you know it's more than just that. It's more than just saying, I believe. It's got a lot to do with actions and all types of things. So, people, experience the goodness of the, God, of the Lord. Chastisement. Which is good. Blessings, favor, which is good. Trials and tribulations, which is good. Because I told you, once God gives you a peace that succeeds all understanding, you're going to be like, oh, I understand now. But I don't have to understand a thing. <laughs> I just have to trust in the Lord. When the Lord comes my help. I always tell the story of Stephen being stoned. Still could see the goodness of the Lord. Have a blessed day.